more than proud. And Whoa. To start things off, already a bit cheeky from Special. I don't see another SUV on the map, mm, which nope. is definitely interesting. You know? uh, but yeah, we talk about like mech being pretty viable on this map too. Not having that barracks at home to make a reactor and stuff. Maybe he's just hoping that Rogue has a super overreaction to this. But so far, he's actually doing everything kind of right, it feels like. Yeah. Hoping for Special here to get lucky and maybe grab one drone, but that's obviously going to get somewhat difficult. You can just get a few Zerklings, that would already be nice. There is a second Barracks going up at home at this point, so maybe Special's just going to use this one Barracks proxy to transition into... Wow, a three racks! He's going full cure over here! That is really cool, actually. Like, you know, uh, people talk... Well, one of the Zerks oh. talk about it being predictable, a drone as well. I, actually, I, not bad. Yeah, I kind of like this. At first, I was thinking it was a bit meme and stuff, but... If you think about Blackburn as a whole in general as well, you're forced onto one base uh, as your third only. Mm -hmm. And here, three racks, four. What? Oh, these Brit. He's wow. going KLO from Wings of Liberty. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there is still a YouTube video out there, Ben. This is this is starting to be really cool because, yeah, you don't expect this. Wait, a tech lab? At okay, I okay. It's totally going real off track here. Like, is he just going to start Stim, Combat Shield? Yeah, I think it's going to be Stim, and I think he's going to just go ultra all in with this. Like, I don't think we ever see a factory in this game, Ben. So I think the first time that Special has Stim and Combat Shield, this attack is going to pack one hell of a punch. And look at Drone, he's, uh, look at Rogue, he's still just droning like a mad lad. And even those upgrades, Kev, like, that's a big commitment. You talk about the resources that went into that. That's a lot. I don't think there's a Baneling Nest down either, but no. even with a Baneling Nest, it would just be slow Banes. With and some now he's good making Spore Crawlers. He has no idea, no idea whatsoever that this is coming. This is the first time that Rogue is going to see there are more than just a couple of Marines out there already. He can cancel those Spores immediately. He's going to fire up 16 Links, but 16 Links should not normally be enough. Now, of course, if all the queens are in the correct position, that's where things become a bit more doable. We can start dreaming about holding. But there is serious potential in the very first team for special. He throws down a scan and all he sees are queens. He doesn't see any other units. So it almost say, Ben, we're looking for the right angle and then we go. I think he's got it here, Kevin. Two queens fall immediately. The Zerglings, that was not a flank whatsoever. And Rogue caught with his pants down in this first game. All the transfusions are gone. A second stim. Will he be able to get enough damage done? I mean, oh, already I think it's looking all right for him. It will get cleaned up eventually by the looks of it, but I think Special's more than happy with that for starting things yep. off. Almost 2,000 resources went down there for Rogue. Only 900 resources went down for Special. Rogue is now only four workers ahead. And let's not forget that Special was able to save a couple of these Marines. And that was only the first wave. There is a good chance that we're going to try this again with the next 15 Marines. First Medivax are on the way, plus one attack as well on the way for Special. I think this game is looking very, very promising for the man who obviously comes in as the overwhelming underdog in this decider match of Group C. And this is definitely a feisty start. I I'm worried, though. I, I love this depot being out here because it allows uh... you to get into better position, not to get a wraparound, but it does. Oh, Special's managed to run away with a few units here, but this is a good delay and a good bit of time buying for Rogue. Yep, he does lose a lot of links, of course, but you're right. We're getting three SCVs, a couple of Marines went down. You're forcing out some stims as well. These Marines are not being healed up yet. More links. Rogue does have to be careful that he doesn't get too carried away doing stuff like this. But obviously, time is on his side. A special does have a couple of Marines on the other side, and he just wants to go again. The Queen number is obviously not as high as it normally is. The first few Bane links finish up. These Bane links won't have speed yet, though, for the next minute or so. Special doesn't have a third CC at all, right? Like, his, his work account actually got up to a pretty decent number, and Rogue, he feels confident enough to start up 2-2. I think it's a decent move. Maybe he could have got away with just the plus two armor, but he's feeling confident despite the situation. I, a weird game so far, but I love it from Special. Do you think that Rogue is expecting there to be a third command center? I, I think so. Like, I, I'd, I'd imagine so. With, with everything that he's doing so far, even looking to take a fourth here, I mean... Granted, Zerg does need to keep on expanding. Nice snipes by all oh, really good snipes from Special. Yep. That drops the Bane count to zero at this point. And all we have is 22 Zerglings out on the map. So Rogue really needs to get back to unit production because we are looking at 43 Marines with plus one combat shield and stim. Medivac count up to six. I actually think if the micro is good here by Special, I think he should be able to close it out. We are back to nine Queens. Okay, there are the 20 Banelings. But the moment that 20 Banelings are done, we also only have 27 Zerglings remaining. And that's also not a crazy amount. No, like Rogue really needs to buy time somehow. But even 
even with time against this. The tanks are creeping slowly forward as well. Queen's doing a good job of buying time. Those are a lot of Bailings all clumped up. The tank fire does get some juicy connections here. I think Special's doing it, Kev. Yep, one tank survives, and that's obviously very important. Those were all the Bailings for Rogue. There are four Bailings left. He's going to try to get eight more out. Two, two upgrades are 70% done, but that's kind of useless. You need those units right here, right now. Special's got Ooh. 81 army supply. He's gunning down Bailings left, right, and center. He stims up the ramp. And this is it, man. Queens are great, but they can't possibly be this great. No, they can't. And by the way, the sniping from Special. Sexy. It's been on point. That's something I don't normally credit him for. And wow, well played. Oh, 3cc follow-up. I tell you what, extreme to extreme from Special. And I, I like that kind of play in this kind yep. of series. We see a fusion core go down as well, Benjamin. Ooh. I, I, you know, even though we went for the two racks opening, I almost wouldn't be surprised if this turns into a mech game from him. This does go kind of back to what I was talking about in the beginning of the day, where I'm a bit worried that maybe we're getting a bit too fancy and a bit carried away, because there's a good chance that Special Battlecruiser shows up, and Rogue's going to deal with it, lose a couple drones, and then you blink twice, Rogue's got five bases, creep everywhere, 90-plus drones, and then it's just wave after wave of Ling Bane crashing into the Terran. And even if some of those attacks may not be pretty, if you are as rich as Rogue could be on a map like this, you can get away with pretty much any attack and justify it. Look at this. A few Marines coming out here. Here, maybe to hunt down some overlords if you can get them, because trying to engage with this amount of Hellions with just Lings, you have to kind of depend on the uh, the Queens a little bit, and oh my goodness, that's actually a lot of Hellbats to worry about. Yep, we have 11 Queens and 33 Zerklings, so it really kind of comes down to the engagement. Don't forget, uh, there's a BC that can like pop in at any point, and that's exactly what happens. Well, this is going to be annoying for Rogue. Rogue's absolutely going to have to maybe see if the Sport Crawler can participate. First Queen is being kept alive, though. We're going to have to send these drones away as quickly as we can. Queens are getting a lot of hits off on these Hellbats, though, Benny. They certainly are. This run-by attempt from Rogue, though, not really getting much done at all, but you can say the same about this push from Special. It looks super scary. That's a lot of lost mining time, actually, and maybe Special can hunt them down. Yep, and uh, he's actually going to morph a couple of these Hellions uh, back into Hellion mode just to catch up with these drones. And in the end, we managed to grab five. It gets eight with that final shot, so plus three. As his battle cruiser is still roaming around as well in the main base. Uh, I, like, if you look at the numbers right now, you're like, oh, that's not that bad. But I actually think that Special hopes for quite a bit more than we well, got done there. I also think that Rogue was hoping maybe for a little more with his Ling counter that though. I think he was hoping oh. for a lot more, but as we say that, the Ling's kind of getting a... It wasn't a full wraparound, and they're kind of indecisive here. They don't know where they want to go, and... Still decent, though. Yeah, it's still decent. And I mean, they're 1-1 as well. Like, these are dealing a lot of damage to these uh, SCVs, but does actually keep a lot of these red SCVs alive. You have and to micro there a little bit. I think Special can be very fortunate that Rogue didn't send those links back around, because a lot of those SCVs at the third base are very low in HP. Look so at this. Oh, my goodness. These two links going to have a field day. Tip, tap, top. Takes down three extra SCVs for his efforts there. Wait, did the, B the BC didn't die? Okay, okay, back in the base. Yamato does start now, but full-on mech game coming in from special, but look at that work account. That is not what you want. Nope, kind of what I predicted and what, what I was afraid of. These guys are just so fast, players like Rogue, and you know, the very best Zerks out there, Rogue, Dark, Serral, Raynor. It always feels like, oh, they're in a bit of trouble, their backs are up against the wall, and then they somehow manage to deal with everything in a somewhat decent manner. They run the drones away, Queens are getting enough shots off, and at the same time, they find just that little bit of damage, and it's a lot easier for Rogue to crank out 20 workers than it is for Special at this point. Oh, it absolutely is. Oh. Seeing a little bit of a ling there might give away the game a little bit, and Special does see it, um, which is nice for him. And the problematic thing for Special, when you go in mech, you're meant to have that nice transition into the late game where, you know, you keep your work account alive because you've got so many Hellions to defend, but Rogue's done such a good job of just surviving the onslaught and just being in a good position. He's going for Mulelisk. Are you surprised to see those? A little bit. I like, maybe, maybe he's just got, like, I want to deal damage in his mind, but... Yeah, I, I think uh, Corruptors would have been the far safer option here. I mean, the first Thor is already out as well, I believe. I don't think we have any Cyclones, Missile Turrets, or Widow Mines, though. So it really does all come down to one big daddy Thor and those two battle cruisers. I don't know if both of them can teleport home. Rogue is not just going up to five bases, by the way, but he's already going up to six bases. We are going to have Yamato Cannon in eight seconds, and one of these screens actually doesn't get healed up. 
So Special gets a little bonus pick off there. Now if he finds two Yamatos, he can get two more. But we have barely have any anti-air here, and I'm very worried. Because one Thor cannot possibly defend three bases. I think Juanito is about to lose another additional oh. 15, if not more, SCVs. Yeah, and look at that Thor getting trapped by his own tanks and has to bring the BCs back home. But there's Muters literally everywhere, and Yamatos do go down. Third base, though. Everything is there for the taking. The battle cruise is a little bit slow. We've already lost 11 SCVs. We're going to make it 15. Links are going to try to get into the natural, but the tanks are going to prevent that. So we've lost 19, 20 workers at this point. Special is doing a very good job in making sure he doesn't skip a beat on SCV production. But the Rogue is maxed out, Ben. He's maxed out with 99 drones. Can we have a look <laughs> at that income graph? Because this is going to be looking gnarly. Yeah, look at that spike. And I mean, it's just going to be in Rogue's favor. 2-1 is finishing up for Special over here. But oh, this is not the position you want as mech. It's not the position you can afford to play with. We have 22 Mutalisk. If all the Mutas are here, I actually wouldn't hate to see 22 Mutalisk fight three BCs. Yeah, especially with the uh, teleport on cooldown, right? Given yeah. that he had to get back home to defend and stuff. But yeah. oh, if there's anything going for special, it is the fact that he can get together a really scary army because Mutas in a straight up fight, they don't truly cut it. Yeah, the more I think about it, the more I wish that Rogue would have just taken that fight there, rally all of his Mutas towards the middle, because he's got those 99 drones that you mentioned before. So even if you lose six or seven Mutas to take out two out of three battle cruisers, that is something I'd be completely okay with, because you've got a monstrous economy yourself. Instead, he's gonna go for the Thor, and he is going to get it. He's obviously gonna be able to pick up this missile turret too. And just when Juanito's economy has recovered a little bit, he's about to lose a few more SCVs and a handful of tanks as well. I mean, Rogue seems pissed off over here. He absolutely does. He's like, you took a map off me? Well, here's a lot of Bailings, <laughs> a lot of Muters, and wow, no reaction there from the SCVs either. Just flew down to their fate, and Rogue is everywhere, man. You can feel that he is angry. Do you also feel that Zerg players always love these kinds of games more than any other kind of game of StarCraft 2, where they've got all the bases, they can be a bit reckless, they've got that sick economy. It's like, all right, this is my time to shine. At the same time, they're still transitioning. We see the Ultralisk Cavern going up in the main base or somewhere, at least on the rogue side of the map. So you can even transition into Muras. Uh, but I still think that, excuse me, into Ultras, but I still think the time of the Mura is not gone yet. There are still plenty of moments where I believe that Rogue can find more economic damage. I love the fact he's gone for plus one armor on air, by the way. Plus two Thors, actually two shot Mutalisks. So getting one armor, I think it negates that effect, which Rogue is a smart player. Uh, two turrets is also not going to be enough, man. Oh. So many Mutalisks. It is, and Big Daddy Thor does come along, doesn't get a shot off or anything like that, but... Yeah, Rogue, he's just not slowing down. Like, his gas income, I, I don't know what it's at, but he's spending so much gas, getting all the big upgrades, and look at that, doubling the gas count almost here. And the mineral count. <laughs> Everything, everything's just going in Rogue's favor, but the fact that Special's hanging on in the way that he's doing, definitely tenacious. Mm, yep, four bases is something. I don't know if Special can ever get up to five, but Rogue does need to get a little bit careful because at this point, Special does have more army supply than he does. So there's no guarantee, but here come all the Bailings again. The Mutas are going to get on top of the Thors. They're going to blow up the Missile Turret. They're going to blow up the Planetary. Can we save a couple of those SCVs, perhaps? Nope, the Mutas are going to take care of those little guys as well. I almost think, yeah, I want to say the best plan for Specials is grab everything that he has and try to end the game, F2A move. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, look, Rogue, during that fight was maxed, he's still maxed out. And, you know, he hasn't reached his final form yet. Look at those upgrades coming online. I mean, this army from Special... Special does have a bigger army, though. I know five Thors are in production, so they're not actually here yet. That's a lot of supply that's still stuck in the Terran main base. But this is still something you're going to have to respect. I, I, Yeah, you are right. It's just... Oh, oh, those Thors are getting some big shots off on these Mutas. They're almost fighting without their army. And here, Rogue isn't trading uh, like he wanted. The BCs as well helping out here. Is Special doing it? I, I don't know, because obviously Rogue's going to have a ridiculous amount of reinforcements. And eventually, the only thing that is going to be left are four BCs. But they do still have a couple of Yamatos. Rogue realizing that the BCs is something he's going to have to take very serious. And that's why he's going to fire up a couple of Corruptors. And with the 70 extra links on the way and plus three finishing up, I think Rogue is going to be more than fine because at this point he's getting close to Max again. But that actually looked a bit dicey, man. <laughs> uh, it looked really dicey for a moment there. I, I like Rogue obviously made it look a bit scary, but the thing is, how scary was it? Like he's still maxed out, and his next army it's going to be three three. It's going to have corruptors in the skies as well. I mean, that's a good amount of fours, but if you have enough Ling Bane just to pop it down quickly. 
Yeah, it's a rough one. I love the SUVs coming in. It was scary to our casual eyes, man. Uh, if only we had a an expert eye over here to help us <laughs> out with this Zerg analysis. But here we go. Rogue runs in with a ton of Bailings. Bailings trading with falls, but it works out. Look at Special Supply just plummeting and mm -hmm. But I won't forget about Scarlet against Massa. I know a slightly different level perhaps, but where we had similar openings. It was like, oh, this is really great for Scarlet. And then she got a bit over eager, took a poor fight against Marines a bit further away from the natural than necessary. And that one worked out well. So once in a blue moon, you actually still see this looking all right for the Terran, but if both players do everything correctly, this should be good for Rogue. Yeah, look at Rogue scouting as well. Like, with his Overlords, this one just sits here every time kind of thing. You can proxy so close to Rogue. And, oh, that bunker. So he is going into very quick Reaper follow-up. So the idea here isn't just to, you know, kill his opponent with a two racks or super slow him down. There is that transition already thought about. Yeah, but it's still annoying though, because you look yeah. at that second hatchery, it's very close to finishing up. Meanwhile, Juanito has not started his command center yet. At this point, I don't think he's got any firepower at home either. So the Marines are going to make their way home. Do you think that Marine? No, the Marines not going to be quicker than these Zerklings, man. This is going to be annoying. Sure, having a Reapers is great, but these Reapers are going to spawn on the other side of the map. And I think this is already very frustrating to deal with. Oh, oh I, okay. Yeah, like so far, it's it's kind of a respectful game, right? Like, Special got there, he's like, oh, it isn't hatch first? Okay, okay, I'm gonna get back. That's a lot of extra links. That's a lot of links. He's, he's looking for a cancel in that command center. He identified that the CC is being built on the low ground, and Rogue just said, hey man, if you open up with a 2 Rex, I highly doubt that you're gonna have enough. Now, these Reapers could potentially spot all the links that are gonna be produced as one drone does get picked off, second one very low in HP. It seems like we are going to lose both Reapers here, though. After killing a oh, total of one drone. Wow. And that is just going to do it. I mean, Special knows that he cannot keep that command center alive. Rogue has...